Discussing about passing everything on consent. <coughs> Brings us to item number three: re a request to increase uh, advertising bus rates. Is there a motion for that? Okay. By Wall Street. Okay. Straight discussion. Chancellor Alderman Wolski. Um, I'm going to defer to my superintendent, Brian Rankin. Uh, he put a lot of this information together and uh, talk a lot more intelligently to it than I can. So I'll uh, ask him to come address him. Alderman Wolski and committee, um, I have 
have not personally spoken to the advertisers. We currently have three advertisers advertising our buses. Um, one declined to renew for this coming year regardless of the price. It just was not in their budget. Um, one, we are probably not going to renew with them. The uh, Lutheran Social Services contract will probably come to an end at the end of April. So the only one that will roll over will be the you know, year's contract. And I on this issue. Um, when I put that together and put in this request, my thoughts were, as you can see in the memo, that we were advertising. And when I initially set the costs up, I looked at other cities and what they were charging. Broke that down by the number of hours they were providing service. Then I came up with the number of hours we were providing service to say hours a day and came up with what was a fair cost at the time. Since then, when we've expanded our service up to 12 hours a day, that's a 50% expansion of what we're offering. So I thought it was prudent to also increase the cost. Obviously, not that much. I'm asking for a 30% increase, that they're still getting a 50% increase over visibility that they didn't have before. That's, that's where the, sure, the, the, that, that's how the thought process is. <coughs> those numbers. So, uh, I'll continue, if I just may add a, a comment here. I appreciate that information, fellas. I, I think uh, obviously with with some, some new advertisers moving out and, and some opportunities becoming available, uh, I think this is something we want to keep a very close eye on because we don't want to price this opportunity such that we, we exclude people from participating. and. Uh, 21,000 versus 28,000. We, we want to be we want to be there for every dollar, but that, that price elasticity is something we want to be real careful of. So I appreciate it. If I may comment on Orlovsky as well, um, we do have four other advertisers interested okay. that have been kind of waiting in the wings until we had open spaces for the buses. I have contacted one of them. They are interested, and I did explain to them that we were looking at raising the rates. They were still interested even at the possible raise rate that we're still to be approved. So we are working through new advertisements, even if there happens to be an issue with any of the current ones. Right. Any further questions? Good. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? Yes. Barney? Yes. Stanford? Yes. Olson? Yes. Padua? Yes. <coughs> yes. Straight? Yes. Takes us to item five. Uh, this is the final payment for the water plan HMGP project, project number 3673. Is there a motion? So moved. Yeah. Second. Uh, moved by Sitman. Yep. Second by Wolski. Discussion. Alderman Wolski, Alderman Jasper, thanks. I uh, pulled this one as well. Uh, so Dan, I uh, got a quick email from me this afternoon, give him a little heads up on this. Um, first of all, uh, comment, uh, reading the memo that you guys have, uh, as a change order in this project, added the north side opening structure equipment. I assume that's going to be in the uh, aluminum soft lock and the upright verticals and things like that. Uh, the goal being single sourcing so we don't have two different systems on different sides of the street. Is that pretty accurate? Sure. To answer your Alderman Walski. Yes, that's correct. Uh, we wanted to have the, the equipment on the south side, uh, the same as the north side, is their mirror image, the openings and everything, and uh, the building that was actually constructed to house all of the closure structures was sized to accommodate uh, the structure on the north side. Okay. So I, it, it will help, um, like I said, being one, being interchangeable, all the same type of stop logs as both of the structures on the south side, but also uh, it'll give us a definite, uh, we know what, how much room we need in that building for storage of the stop logs and storage structure. Sure. Well, Jasper, I may one more question here. Dan, uh, um, you mentioned the interchangeability uh, regarding this, and that strikes me as something that's really very important. Um, you know, these are, those are two of the larger structures we're going to be dealing with in the future when we, we go into flood fighting mode, but there's a number of other openings. Um, it's, this strikes me as a particular product that, that it may be valuable to single source throughout the community. Um, so we have interchangeability between all the openings. Um, is that something we're, we're able to do? Is that something you guys are looking at in terms of 
the, the, the feasibility and logistics of putting these openings in place in the future. President Chancellor Alderman Walski, yes, we are looking at that. Um, you know, as the design engineers started on this, one thing they did standardize is the distance between the uprights, the eight feet, you know, so that that was standard no matter uh, what closure you put in to keep them consistent. But yes, it, it would be very beneficial to us if we could um, use this one supplier, you know, since they meet all the criteria uh, for the Corps of Engineers and everybody. Um, I, I can't, uh, I guess, say in, in uh, I guess, with certainty um, that we could single source it when we don't have an open contract. You know, this contract, uh, we had a contract and a bid item for it. Um, I know on other projects, different things, you have been able to, um, you know, identify reasons for going single source, such as compatibility. Um, we do it with our traffic signal controllers in the city uh, so that it's compatible with the existing system. So if we have a, you know, a contract uh, that's open, that we can uh, change order something onto as we look forward into the next ones. I, I think it's uh, beneficial and, and we could definitely do that. Uh, but I'd have to, I guess, look more in detail on if uh, the state would allow single sourcing. Yeah. Sure. I, it just struck me as logistically, I mean, if we have multiple different systems and we're putting in this gate down by Broadway and this other gate over here by Roosevelt Park, the, the management challenges grow somewhat exponentially. And so I just, it, Struggling is something to, to bring up. So yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, I, I would agree that uh, if, if we could keep all the same uh, type of equipment, uh, if something gets damaged, uh, it's easy to grab a piece from one place and put it in another place if it's needed. So it uh, would make uh, perfect sense. Okay. Any other questions for the? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Any further discussion on the item? Please call the roll. Sidman? Yes. Straight? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Contabula? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Motion carried. That takes us to item seven, um, which is a request for approval to purchase police patrol vehicles on the state bid. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Wolski. Second. Second by Straight. Discussion. President Jamser, uh, <coughs> quick, quick question here for Chief Olson. I gave my heads up on this one too. Um, Chief, uh, seeing that this contract is going to a Minnesota firm, I just kind of wanted to call the attention uh, to, to whether we make this contract available locally, if there's been interest in bidding on these locally, and, and give you a chance to comment uh, on that generally. Uh, Chairman Jasser, Alderman Wolski, we have uh, for the past four or five years gone off of the state bid to purchase patrol cars. Um, the experience about four or five years ago that led us to change was when we uh, basically we had uh, a local bid that was higher than our budgeted amount that we had to, pur to purchase vehicles and uh, the state bid was lower than that and so the that particular year the, the local business uh, came down to our budgeted amount the next year when we went out for bids, it was an opportunity to save several thousand dollars per vehicle by going by state bid. And after consulting with our finance department, we just went with state bid from then on. And that's what we've been doing for the past probably four years. And of course, the local businesses have the opportunity to bid on the state bid as well if they choose to do so. Okay. Any other questions for the chief? Thank you, sir. Any further discussion on the item? Call the roll. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Padrebula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Motion carried. Item 10 is uh, uh, RFQ uh, for architects for the auditorium floor replacement. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Sitma? Second. <coughs> Seconded by multiple people, we'll go with Walski this time. Um, discussion. Alderman 
Sapolsky. President Jansen, kind of a quick comment. Scott, uh, had a conversation not that long ago uh, with some of the women on the roller derby team. And uh, they had been looking for a space to participate. And, and the existing floor in the auditorium didn't quite work. It was maybe a, a degree of sponginess that made roller derby really, uh, let's say, uh, more difficult, harder work, less gliding. Um, and, and so anyway, I just kind of wanted to, to bring that to your attention as something that, that might be worth considering as we explore this new floor. If there's a way to, to kind of bring some of these uses together uh, so that sort of works for, for other individuals. I'd like that, you know, considered if possible. We'll take that under consideration, obviously, yes. Any other questions? <coughs> Any other discussion on the motion? Just a comment. Um, I think your comment, uh, Josh, brings out the, I guess, the potential value of having uh, greater coordination between Park Board, our auditorium and rec people, and doing kind of, if you would call a case, if you will, a case finding, looking for people out there who would like to use these facilities and coordinating. Also with the college, that's another thing. <coughs> Many years ago, we had a committee to study facilities in town, recreational facilities. You know, and there might be time for another look at that. And you know, if at some point budget allows, looking at you know, person to coordinate, you know, scheduling payment. I know the auditorium is working on, uh, you know, having a computerized uh, system there. So I think there, that's an area where, without too much cost, we could achieve some sort of synergy. You know, there's no sense in duplicating. There's also no sense if there's a group out there that could use these facilities of not reaching out to them and, and maybe investing and partnering with them. Call the roll. Sitma? Yes. Green? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Padre Yes. Motion carried. Uh, that brings us to item 13, which is the award of bid for the UPS and battery backup for the data center and 911 equipment. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Olson? Second. Second by Sitma. Discussion? I'm not sure who pulled this, but. President Jansen. I, uh, I, I, oh, uh, my apologies, sir. I, I think I pulled it and I actually had the wrong number, so I'm going to move on to the vote. Okay, my apologies. All right, very well. Yeah. Seeing no further discussion, please call the roll. Olson? Yes. Padre Yes. <coughs> Sigma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Jansen? Yes. Um, Item 14 is a budget amendment for the rec track uh, facility management uh, recreation league and tournament software. Is there a motion? <coughs> so moved. Moved by Sitma. Second. Second by Strait. Uh, discussion? Mayor Barney. I had a couple of questions on this one. Uh, perhaps Scott can come forward and I'll answer them. You know, in, in the documentation that we received, th there's no description of what this is, what it's going to be used for, um, other than just the budget amendment. Could you give us more information as to what this product is, what we're going to use it for, and why we need it? President Johnson, Mayor Barney, um, basically what this was, when the money went into the budget last year, um, it was split up into training and then also into the actual purchase of the, the uh, modules for the, the rec track software. When the bills come in, they have to be put into certain categories, and this is basically a transfer of where the money went in out of one budget into the other, other part of the, out of the budget. It's basically money that was there for this personal, this uh, rec track, but was put in the wrong place. Okay, and what is this product? <clears throat> rec track software is a facility management slash recreation <laughs> software uh, online registration, credit card usage, uh, basically anything that you see in any type of recreational uh, uh, facilities or throughout the state and the, re in the region where a, f a user group, whether you're registering for softball or basketball or just register registering your kid for uh, art classes during the summer, uh, facility management as far as renting rooms, is, so we aren't taking those phone calls and doing the paper chase, they can go on and request a, 
uh, room and tell us what they want in there. It comes to my desk. I accept that, and it basically goes into a database of a calendar, and that's how we keep keep up to date on all the events and activities that are going on at the auditorium and recreation. And this, if I can, and this was approved Mayor. in the 2017 budget. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Alderman Walski, do you have a further question? I, I do have a couple other questions. Uh, okay. Scott, uh, service, is this going to be hosted, cloud-based, or are we, are we going to be holding hardware that holds this database, or are we going to be letting the, the, the virtual world do this for us? I'm going to have to defer to Paul on that. I, he's been working with me, and okay. I'm not uh, really up on all that kind of stuff. But Alderman Dancer. Um, Walski. It, yeah, it'll be, it's held in our virtual environment here downstairs. Okay, so we, we, this will be, software will be physically located on our equipment. We're not subscribing to a cloud service. Is currently, yes. Okay. Um, one other kind of follow up here, uh, Scott. Uh, sitting at a park district meeting, I'm going to say last September, um, they made a new investment and a transition to a service that they're using to manage the Mesa Arena and maybe a, a few other facilities. Um, you know, you guys are across the hall from them. Is this a conversation that you're, you're coordinating a little bit with them to, to grab some uh, uh, consistency across these different institutions for, for citizens, or uh, are, we, are we still on a really standalone basis with this stuff? President Jancer, Alder Mawalski, when we first started looking at this, this rec track software, we d I did approach the park district and see if they were interested in becoming the way it was put together is you couldn't do it because we were two separate entities. You couldn't do it all as one package, but they could sure, they could sure be a, a separate client on that same type of RecTrack software. Um, at that time, they chose not to do that. I was not even aware that they're doing another type of uh, software in the, in the park district. I, and it was just with the Mesa that, I, that I'm aware of, it. specifically there was a transition to, to ice booking and, and things like that. But, um, you know, obviously this, this I think raises a, a, a conversation or a topic that, that has come up a number of times over the last few years, which is starting to look for and find the, the way these two uh, departments, the, the Park District and our Rec Department, can start to, to maybe co-manage and, and uh, uh, maybe find some efficiencies, find some, some smoother pathways for citizens, because I, I think there is some confusion about out there about where do I turn, who do I ask for this particular service. So. Um, I, I just kind of wanted to bring that up. I, I think there's a there's a point coming in our future where we're gonna we're gonna need to really talk about the whether these two departments belong together. So, Alderman Sitma. Thank you. Um, just for uh, the I, I guess the point that Mr. Walski brought up, some of those conversations uh, are are very high level starting um, between uh, the parks and Scott and myself and some other folks to start that dialogue. So hasn't gotten any deeper than setting some time together to take a look at that down the road, just for informational. Alderman Pottergill. I just wanted to echo those two sets of comments. That's something that I frequently hear from people who are new to the community, is they don't know who to go to, they don't know where to go. Uh, individual departments, uh, park versus us, may be responsive, but it, it's, it's maybe not opaque, but it certainly isn't very transparent or very visible to outsiders. Uh, many of us who have been in the community a long time, we kind of know. But I think that's another area where we can achieve a much better synergy. And I think, you know, systematically, you know, as a council, I think we need to reach out to the park board and um, start the conversation. And, uh, you know, I, I'd rather it, the direction come from us as a group, as a, as a group of seven rather than just one or two. I'm pleased Sean's doing that, certainly. But um, I think it's an important enough issue. Um, you know, every generation or so, it seems like we look at possibility of merging these and I think uh, you know with technology advancing with the nature of recreation ch changing um, I'm still you know going back to the day I spent with you folks last fall and how incredibly informative that was to me and you know one of the things we talked about is you know where's recreation going to be in 5 to 15 years you know people are going virtual kids are sitting on their butts and not playing games, enrollment in activities that you, what we sponsor, you sponsor is going down, and it's not just us; it's it's nationally. So I think it, I think it'd be time to to really formally start looking at that process. I think also uh, the fact that you're you're getting on there and may have some retirement plans, and I guess the administrator of the park board also is in a similar situation. So it might be a very natural, very good kind of time. 
Um, nature recreation changing. People are expecting more out of services. I was impressed, for example, you talked about getting this service where you could sign up for classes and things and activities and pay online. And it would save an incredible amount of money and, and time for us and make it much easier for the average citizen. So I think that this is ripe for major synergies. Um, we have a whole range of facilities in town. Um, you know, I think informally, it sounds like it coordinated quite well with Park District, but, you know, I, I think in a more formal fashion and, you know, I think from my point of view, um, really looking very seriously at merging these two operations uh, for the good of the citizen. Um, efficiencies, I think, would be, you know, there. But I think in terms of having things run more smoothly, and I'm really pleased with what I'm seeing and what I saw the day I spent with your department and the changes that are you know, talked about here, the expenditures and the operational changes in, in this agenda. So just again, to, to second that, to say I, I think we really need to look more carefully at these two groups. Welcome straight. Thank you, Chairman Jasper. Scott, I don't want to get off topic, but I was really excited over the holidays to see this giant tournament taking place here in town. And is that, with sophomore upgrades like this, is that the high school athletics that reaches out to you about this Class B tournament that took place over the weekend? We used to have a Class A tournament there that over the holidays, and that seems to have gone totally away, but you had multiple Class B teams here all weekend. That was fantastic. Uh, where, how does that originate? <clears throat> President Jansen, Alderman Street, basically it, it's like any other renter or say Minot High, Minot Ryan, anybody that wants to rent the auditorium for a, a day of games or just a, a doubleheader or whatever. Um, that was actually three days of basketball. Uh, two were sponsored by our Redeemers Christian School. There was a girls side of it and then there was a boys side of it and one was sponsored by Rugby High School. It's basically what you just said, the holiday tournaments that used to be around are no longer around this area. They've kind of consolidated in other areas and this is something that uh, I believe it was Jeremy Feller from up at my our Redeemers that started all this stuff, and um, it's kind of moved from the dome over to the auditorium now. So, I commend you on that. So great, thanks. Okay, um, Mayor Barney. I just wanted to uh, comment on Alderman Padragula's uh, comments uh, <clears throat> and let him know that uh, we began conversations with the, the Park District a couple of years ago when Mr. Staub was here, and we had meetings with uh, some of the members of their board and. Um, uh, Ms. Hempel was involved investigating, uh, like Alderman Sitma said, at, high, at a high level, how we could consolidate these, these very similar functions and get rid of some of the redundancies and make it very much clearer where people should go uh, for these types of services. Uh, unfortunately, uh, things happened. We had a change in government, which took up a considerable amount of time. The city manager left, which took up a considerable amount of time, and it got pushed back to the uh, uh, on the burner. But uh, I've had conversations with Alderman Sitma, who's expressed interest in it, and I'm sure it'll be moving forward in the near future now that things have settled down a bit. Any other comments on the motion? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Let's call the roll, please. Sitma? Yes. Strain? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Jansen? Yes. Olson? Yes. Pondrigula? Yes. Motion carried. That brings us to item 16, the retirement and transfer of ownership of the police canine dog. So moved. Moved by Sitek. Second by Strait. Chief Olson, did you want to speak <coughs> about this item or just coming forward for questions? Are there any questions for the Chief? No, 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 no. He, he knows that I've got a couple on this President Jackson. So. Okay. Um, I, again, uh, an email this afternoon, but there were um, some some details that I kind of wanted clarified for, for the record. Um, uh, Chief, the projected service career of, of one of these animals, uh, we're, we're letting this one go a little bit early, but, uh, but that's for good purpose. But I'm curious, what do, what do we expect to get when we, we bring one of these officers into the program? President Jasper, Alderman Wolski, the average life of a police canine is considered to be eight years. So, it, I mean, you could get a year less or a year more, but roughly eight years for a canine. Okay. Um, and, and Chief, the cost to, to train and, and bring a new canine officer into service, um, and uh, are, are there any budget considerations that, that, that should be considered as, as this decision is, is pondered? Uh, President Jasper, Alderman Wolski, the uh, 
because we didn't anticipate losing this dog, we hadn't budgeted anything in the next budget year for a replacement. Uh, this particular dog uh, was purchased with the assistance of Trinity Hospital, gave us a grant of $7,000 towards the purchase of this dog, uh, which covered the actual purchase price for the dog. The additional cost for, to have a police canine uh, are for the training for the officer, which can range in, in the neighborhood of uh, another eight to $10,000, uh, which we covered uh, for this dog that we're retiring now uh, out of asset forfeiture money. Uh, so there wasn't, uh, I, don't, I don't believe there was any budgeted money used to purchase PICO. And we would probably be uh, seeking to use some of our future asset forfeiture money to replace since we hadn't had a chance to budget for it. Uh, I do anticipate uh, it's been a while since we have received asset forfeiture uh, distri distribution from our drug task force. Uh, I know they, are, they have some money that is in the pipeline that has been processed, so uh, I'm expecting somewhere in the neighborhood of a $30,000 check this spring from our drug task force uh, for asset <coughs> forfeiture, so there would be more than enough funds to, to replace a canine. Chief, um, how, many, how many working police dogs have we had? Or uh, President Janser, the most we've had at any one time is two dogs, and we've had two, on average now, two for many years. Okay, and the, and the other animal is younger. In good shape and younger and... Yeah, our, the, the existing dog uh, that we have in service now is Lois, and she is about three years old, I believe. Okay, thank you. Just one follow up. Chief, uh, in your email this afternoon when you responded, uh, uh, I, I got the sense that these dogs do an outstanding job of earning their keep in terms of their, their great investments for us. Um, is, is two the right amount? Do we, do we have a, a need to, to have another officer, canine officer on board with us? Uh, or, you know, I'm just curious as to where we sit in terms of the, the most efficient, best model and having this resource available to our officers. Uh, President Jasper, Alvin Walski, they are, they, they do indeed tend to uh, generate asset forfeiture money because they, they are useful, in, for instance, in a traffic stop or a search where drugs might otherwise not be found. Uh, you have a positive uh, canine sniff and you're able to get a search warrant and locate drugs and quite often currency or <coughs> other assets that, that can be forfeited. Uh, <laughs> The sweet spot as to how many dogs to have is kind of a, a judgment call. We, uh, we could go with an additional dog. It is uh, time intensive in terms of training for the officer. Uh, there is upkeep costs. There is a certain amount of liability incurred uh, if you should happen to have a, a bad bite, so to speak. Uh, so I guess it's been my judgment that two is the right number. Okay. So. Alderman um, Street. Thank you, Chairman Jansen. Chief, how uh, do you have an officer ready to work with this this next canine? Is that have that identified? I guess I'm thinking ahead to the mayor's committee next week on addiction issues. Uh, it seems like we want to be confronting that issue on all fronts. And what's the timeline to get another canine if if you feel you sure you want one? President Jansen, Alderman Street. Uh, we actually have uh, reached out to the kennel where we have purchased the last few dogs. Uh, we're, we'll be getting a price uh, estimate for a new dog, but I would estimate it'll probably be at least uh, through the summer before we could get an officer selected uh, and get a reservation and get a dog, everything in line. It probably would not be until late summer that we would have one online. Thank you, sir. Alderman Sitma. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Not as much a question, Chief, but an observation from back in 2013 when I got to spend a day with Pico and, and the officer at that point. And uh, these dogs are very well trained. And uh, when we talk about the, the cost of retraining or even the, sometimes the impossibility of retraining for another uh, handler, um, if you spend enough time, it, it's very clear very quickly it, the, the asset that those animals really are. Uh, to the to the police force itself, and uh, the only advice I would ever give anybody is don't run. <laughs> <coughs> well, 
Thank you. Thank you. So just to be uh, clear on this, you are in the process of getting another dog in person. You were in the pipe. We're in the pipeline for that. The president, your answer is Dr. Miller. That would be our plan to do that. And like I said, since we hadn't budgeted for it, we would have to rely on asset forfeiture money or a possible another donation. <coughs> so you don't need anything else from us. You you have the authorization. You feel to go ahead and get one. We'll get it done. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? Call the roll. Sigma? Yes. Street? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Hodgabula? Wolf? Yes. Okay. Um, that brings us to item 18 on the uh, list, which is, I believe, item 13 on the slide. Um, this is the virtual server environment consolidation upgrade. Is there a motion? So moved. Um, moved by Wolski, second by Strait. Discussion. Uh, did you pull this all? President Johnson, I, I, I may have. Okay. Uh, and uh, I do have a question. Uh, the uh, I, I think it's based on whether we've got a, a service life of five years or a warranty of five years. Um, I wasn't completely clear on, on what was in the memo in terms of what we're, uh, what the recommendation is. Okay. President Janser, Alderman Walski. Um, both actually. <coughs> Recommended lifespan is about five years for any server hardware. Okay. And then we're also unable to get warranty come April. So hardware warranty. So something breaks, hard drive goes down. So, so on our existing system, all of that expires. Okay. Um, and I, well, I guess what I'm more questioning about is the, the recommended new purchase. Is that a, uh, the, the language in the memo suggests we're going to get maybe five years out of that, but I wasn't sure that we were getting a five year service plan. <coughs> this will be a, sorry. Yep. Present. Received. Paul um, This will be a five year purchase. This, this will be expected to take us until 2023. Okay. Okay. Any further questions for the IT? Go ahead. Thank you, Chairman, Chairman Janser. Uh, is this stored downstairs as well then, here in this building? Yeah. President Janser, Alderman Street, yes. It's downstairs in this building. I guess I just wanted to comment for this body going forward. At some point relatively soon, I think we're going to start talking about the movement of City Hall through the NDR funds. And I'm, I just want us all to be aware, I guess, of how we're going to spend the money and when some of these resources might end up getting moved and how this is one of those things where how that all works and interplays. Uh, I think that's a concern that I have of where we're going to be spending dollars and then some of those resources stay here, some of them might move to a new location. So I, I appreciate you just clarifying. I wanted to speak to that. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Alder Fodergulo. Following up on that, um, I take it this is fairly portable, this server, or how portable is it, I guess? Yes, it's, it's right. We're actually getting smaller. We're taking two two units right. going down to one. Um, it's a size in a rack. So it's, it's a combination of four four one U boxes and then yeah, it, and it it's, it's fairly small. It's portable. We could we could rip it out and take it somewhere in an hour. And you have to have a suitable environment for it, but right. nothing special like in the old days anymore. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate the comment about uh, needing to think about what we can transport. The hospital's facing that now in terms of, and they have been for years now with equipment moving to the new campus. Um, you know, when, we, when it comes time to looking at that, we, I think we need to be in conversation with them. They have some really good experience with it. And, um, the other comment, I guess, would be um, the hall is a building, but it can also maybe be somewhat virtual. So we should look at that too. It'd be exciting. All the straight. Uh, I appreciate you saying that. I guess it, there's obviously the staff need that we have in this right. building for more office space, but it's also this room. And is this room going to then move because Derek has requested we're trying to make upgrades, we're trying to make it handicap accessible. Those things all cost a tremendous amount of dollars and just making sure that we're being good stewards of the money, but also we're going to get, if it's virtual, we have challenges with folks calling in via Skype or right. you know, city council meetings where we have to sit up into a table for video conferencing. So it's just something to be aware of. Strongly agree. City manager, <laughs> finance director, 
actually city manager. President Chancellor, just one clarification on the five years versus three years. Uh, when this item was bid, several of the suppliers bid uh, the choice of three-year warranty and a five-year warranty. The expected life of this product is approximately five years. Uh, we could have considered going with just the three-year warranty and then picking up an additional two years at some point in the future. Um, there are some <coughs> further complications with this. Between the time that we got the cost estimates to prepare the budget for this item and going to bids, um, a new model came on the market. So there was a little bit change of a change in the specifications. Ultimately, what we ended up doing is, is uh, recommending the newer model of the technology. Uh, we plan on going with the five-year warranty. The five-year warranty will be spread, the cost of that will be spread over the life of the asset. So we'll have a budgeted item uh, for the next four years as well for that additional warranty expense. So um, you know, we thought this was probably the best option with the newer version of the hardware and then uh, being covered with the warranty through the, the expected life of the asset. I appreciate that clarification. Any further questions on the item? Discussion? Seeing none, call roll. Wolski? Yes. Farney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Padrabula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. All right, that brings us, uh, motion carried, that brings us to item number 19, which is the CW, CWSRF application, and acting city manager wanted to comment on this. Uh, just a little bit of clarification for this as well. There are actually two attachments uh, with this item, uh, CWSRF application and a DWSRF application. They're both state revolving loan fund applications, one for drinking water, uh, one program for clean water. Um, this all relates to the first phase of the flood protection project and the utility relocations located in there. Um, because of the limitations on the different products, we have gone back and forth a little bit uh, with the state on the application process here. I think the latest consensus as of this afternoon is there will be two separate applications and we're still working through kind of the separation of how much will be DWSRF and how much will be SRF. We expect about $16.5 million between the two programs. Um, very <coughs> attractive rates. Um, so it definitely um, very advantageous for us to pursue this. But I just wanted to clarify that there are actually two different applications. The only difference is, is the initials and the drinking water one has an additional four pages of additional information they want about the water system here in the city. With that clarification, is there a motion? A motion. Is that a second? Moved by Olson, second by Strait. Discussion? President Jamser, Alderman Wolski. A question for the acting city manager. Uh, Mr. Lakefield, uh, I, apparently I missed the second application here, but between these two applications, it sounds like we're going to get pretty close to covering almost the entire cost, uh, the local share of phase one. Would that be accurate? Uh, President Janser and Alderman Wolski, um, it's going to be um, a big portion of that. I believe our local share um, for that phase is about 22 and a half or $23 million. So it is going to be a substantial portion of that. Okay. Um, and we estimate that you know, we would save somewhere between one and a half to 2% um, on the rate on that. So it is very substantial and interesting. Sure. I'd certainly commend city staff for developing this uh, approach. I think it uh, saves some money and makes us make good sense. Any further discussion? Again, I just wanted to echo that, and particularly in view of our discussion last uh, meeting uh, yesterday, um, highlighting uh, issues and concerns about decision making and to this morning's front page story in the paper. Um, I, I think it's important that people know when, uh, when the staff the city administration functions very well and you know saves us a ton of money um, so I think sometimes that story gets lost uh, and I wanted to echo very much your comments Mr. President about Mr. Lakefield and uh, Mr. Berry and their administration in terms of trying to save money and being really creative about this stuff I was really impressed with that when if you apply for a couple of grants here and there you can save us a couple million bucks that's really neat and the public needs to hear that and our staff need to hear our appreciation too so thanks 
further discussion? Seeing none, call the roll. Olson? Yes. Padagula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. That completes our agenda for this afternoon. Uh, with that, we're adjourned.